forum focuses on the issue of charity care in Illinois and the ruling of the Illinois Supreme Court on the Provena case earlier this month, this year. We hope today, and I know we will, to hear from many of our state's leading thinkers about both the facts of the Provena case and the potential ways that we can move forward in the state. One thing is clear, inaction is not an option. The Supreme Court has defined charity care, but left, left the specifics to the legislature and to us to figure out. We want to hear your opinions throughout this conference and your sense of the way we can move forward in Illinois. The lead opinion made the determination that the uh, Provena Covenant didn't satisfy either of the two things that you need to show to be deemed a charitable institution. First of all, that the institution is charitable, and secondly, that the use that the property in question is put is also a charitable use. The state and local government was expecting about $435 million worth of charity care to be provided by these hospitals. And what we discovered is based on their own reports, they only provided $175 million. So 60% of the benefit given did not generate the public service expected in return. But here, if 60% of the tax relief, the tax expenditure, is not in fact generating the benefit you expected, you may want to reevaluate what you're doing or require more charity care to be delivered in return. If hospitals could put in procedures to identify charity care populations better in advance, that 50% of their bad debt costs would go directly to charity care, eliminating 42% of the gap between the charity care being provided right now and the tax break. It's no secret that many uninsured patients have been turned away, sent to the county, or just stabilized at many of our not-for-profit hospitals just because they're uninsured. There are stories of people who have who informed patients who, who after receiving care say, can I receive an application for charity care? And are just made to jump so many hoops with the intent of discouraging them from even completing an application. Very nuanced question, but I think it's entirely reasonable to have some standard for, for the tax benefits received. You know, our, competi our for-profit competitors aren't getting those we ought to be doing something different, something more, something that uh, helps our communities more than they're doing in exchange for that benefit we receive. All hospitals need to do their fair share. Together, everyone needs to be served in a dignified manner. Moving forward, we need to help people get the medical care they need. They deserve, regardless of their ability to pay. Moving forward, we need to fairly distribute the cost of care for the uninsured and underinsured among the nonprofit hospitals. Moving forward, we need to ensure that the public, taxpayers, you and I, get a real service in return for tax exemption. You know, there's a lot of lot of things that can be done in communities. It was very gratifying to work with the community agents in, in a partnership where they were suggesting ideas and we were suggesting ideas and getting feedback from one another and really um, building on that and, and uh, everyone could feel good about the results because it was in everybody's best interest to do that. It's, a, it's an interesting and difficult time to put a mandate for a percentage. And I guess when push comes to shove, the advocate in me is going to say, provided the you know hospitals who are, are very active in the legislative process, can have their voice in it, and I'm confident that they can, that um, we can come up with a bill that's sufficiently nuanced, that it's got a percentage that's a stick, but that it's also acknowledging the universe that we're in right now, which is pretty complex. The biggest thing is it's a very complex issue. It's a very local issue. It's very different in Chicago than it is from downstate Illinois. Um, it, it, and I think it's going to be hard to find statewide standards um, and the other thing is, I think it's sort of irrelevant because in Illinois it's a constitutional issue. Unless you address it and take it out of that constitutional framework, it makes it difficult for anybody, uh, the hospital association, anybody, to work on a legislative solution with no assurance that that's going to provide any protection whatsoever. 
Well, you know, we all know that the whole country have been looking at this case, Provina, for years, patiently waiting to see what would happen in Illinois. And, and I think we, as we move forward, I really want us to be mindful of how the state put some teeth on it. Because I think the state can be an amazing role model for the country about how it creatively addresses the complexity of meeting the needs of the uninsured or underinsured, 